In the previous video, you learned to create or define an integer array, initialized it with some numbers, then you created a basic for loop, traversed the loop, and printed out the contents. In this video, you will learn to use a for loop to count things using a counter. You will also learn to use a for loop to index through an array to fill it, then lastly, to traverse the array again to print out the contents. Additionally, you will also learn what happens when you index an array out of bounds. So here we have a basic for loops class with a main method and then also a for loop here that you see. You can see that it's a basic for loop with a uh, counter initialized over here in this section right here you can see the test to whether to continue the for loop or not and then to increment the counter now in the last video we had a an array inside of here that uh, we're uh, we had originally uh, initialized with some values and then uh, inside of the for loop we print out the array so this is a uh, much simpler use of a basic for loop without the array this is just a counter so we initialize a counter if the counter is less than 100 we continue to print it out so here's the output we're gonna run it and look at the window here this is the uh, again the execution window where we're gonna find our um, a, um, our app being built and then being sent into the cloud for execution and then the execution results from uh, that's printed out on the standard out. So we'll see the standard out in a minute here. Great. So there you see it. The counting starting from zero when we initialize the counter and then we increment we'll bring that uh, section of the code into view here so we have uh, initialize a counter and as long as the counter is less than a hundred we increment and we print so that's what you see in this output here so from zero all the way to 99 is what you will see there so in this next part, we're going to initial. Uh, we're going to uh, declare an array. We're going to define a, an array. Uh, first of all, let's uh, reduce this count to ten. So we're only uh, in the next run. We're only going to see the counter increase from zero to nine. Print out those results. So uh, this next for loop, we're going to uh, before we do the for loop, we're going to uh, define a integer array. So here we go. Int square brackets nums equals new int and we define an array that has a length of 12 um, so this is just uh, defining the array uh, there's nothing inside of the array yet and remember that whenever we define an array and we don't fill it right away we have to define how long that array is so here we have defined that uh, this particular integer array is going to be uh, it's going to have a length of 12 so now we're going to build our, uh, well, we're going to print, print out to verify that the length of this array is we use the length. Okay. And then that should print out the length of the, that particular way to, uh, for us to verify. So now we build the, we index through in this loop. We use that. So and then now we comment and for index. So now we're going to fill that array. So what we're going to say is, um, at 
every index. So starting from zero, we're going to set the contents to be the index times two. Okay. So this is what this, uh, what this set of statement here is saying, right? We initialize a index called, uh, called the index initializes it to zero. Now the test for, uh, to whether to continue this for loop, uh, to continue running this for loop is, uh, whether index is less than nums.length. Because we want to fill the nums, uh, integer array, that's what we want to do. We want to fill it from the zero index all the way to, to the 12, uh, actually to the 11th, right? Uh, zero to the eleventh uh, index, so that's what this um, uh, particular test is. Um, and as long as we're running it, we always um, increment the index. Okay. So inside of the for loop, though, as long as index is less than the length of the uh, integer array, we fill. Um, so for instance, uh, when we start, index will be zero. So num nums at index zero will be filled with zero times two. That will be zero. So num, nums at zero will be zero. Nums at one though, at the um, one index, would be filled with the number two. Nums at two would be filled with the number four, and so on and so forth. So now that's fine and dandy, uh, but we want to be able to see what the contents of that integer array is uh, at the end of it. So we're going to build another. Uh, yet a third for loop, and this time we're going to index it from 0 to the length of the nums array again. But this time, instead of filling it, we're going to print out, uh, we comment right here real quick. Index. Okay, now we're going to print out the uh, what the contents of the that array with that we just filled. Okay, we do that, then we do plus index and then plus another space. Actually let's do this here. Now we do nums index right there, index. and we're good. Okay, so this thing says that we're going to print out the value of nums at index, and the number for the index itself, uh, concatenate the, uh, the word is, colon, and then the value of nums at index. Okay, so that's what the... Uh, this is about. So let's uh, compile this and let's go ahead and run it this time. Great, build is successful, so we're going to run it now. I'm going to pause it for time. Great, we're almost there to running and I'm going to expand this window so we can see the result. There we go. So here we have the first section. Let's uh, Lower this expansion real quick so we can see the code. Here's it. Okay. This is that first section where uh, all we did was uh, run through a counter from uh, 0 to 9. Okay. And this is saying the length of that array. This code right here, the array that we just uh, we just defined. And there, okay. So on line 13, we define the array. On line 15, we print out the length of it. And then the rest of it is uh, where we have filled the array uh, at index 0, the value is 0. At index 1, value is 2 uh, because of the way that we filled it. Where we filled it with the number that is the index times 2. Okay. Now let's look at what happens if we try to have a index uh, that is 
larger. So, um, so when we um, we start the index is zero to print out the value of each thing, uh, and then we increment and we test. Uh, originally, uh, let's put it back to where, the way it was. Originally, when index is uh, eleven. This is 11 is still less than 12. So that, uh, we print out the 11th uh, index uh, array item. Uh, and then we increment. We come back here, increment to 12. 12 is no longer less than 12. 12 is equal to 12, in fact. So uh, so then we quit the loop, and then which quits the method, which quits, quits the class, uh, and then the program's done. So let's look at what happens if we include 12 in here. So now that uh, if we increment the index to 12, 12 is is still is now less than or equal to 12. So, so that means that this for loop will continue to run with the index 12. So let's see what happens uh, when we do that. Okay, we're going to expand this window again. And I'm going to pause for time. Okay, it looks like we're almost right there. Good. Okay, so now you see that uh, when we're printing it out, we go to index 11 and then we update the index, uh, we increment the index 12 and look what happens. Now there's a array index out of bound exception. So you see your first exception error where uh, you incremented the index uh, past the uh, index 11 or the, uh, the, the length of that uh, array. So it identifies where uh, where the problem is um, and what kind of uh, error and there you have it uh, you've seen a basic for loop that counts uh, right there you've seen a the filling of an uh, integer array and then also the uh, how how you would uh, index through and traverse the array in order to print it out and then you've also seen the uh, this uh, array index out of bounds exception.